class, good day. This is your teacher, Ms. Smarts. And on today's video, I am going to discuss with you. Now we will start a new unit, and that is Unit 2. And Unit 2 is all about materials evaluation. So I hope you all are ready because let's not going to waste our time. Let's begin our today's session. Allow me this time to share my screen to all of you. All right, so now you can see my our PowerPoint presentation for Unit 2. So, of course, our subject, it is language learning materials development. So, Unit 2 is all about materials evaluation. And it's a very exciting unit class because here um, you will be learning how should we evaluate our materials and why obviously there is a need to evaluate the materials that we create or that we use. So materials evaluation and unit two, it is composed of two lessons. But before I am going to tell you what are the titles for each lesson, let's try to take a look at first in brief, the things that you will discover under unit two, which is materials evaluation. So this unit would give us a comprehensive exploration on the definition and principles of materials evaluation. We would also take a look into the qualities which each unit of your subject would reflect, as well as the types of evaluating materials or the types of materials evaluation. So as I previously mentioned, this unit is composed of two lessons. And there are also specific learning outcomes that you class will manifest right after completing each lesson. So we also provide web links, which will direct you to the PDF and video files that you can use for perusal and viewing. And of course, you cannot find it here in the PowerPoint presentation, but I would want you to visit the notes that I gave you in advance. So all the links are there. So please um, go to Google or to any uh, web browser and then, you know, just copy and paste the link and obviously you will be directed to the specific um, website or PDF or video that you should really be able to uh, visit. So here are the different lessons which we will take in unit two. As I said, there are only two. So lesson one is all about definition and principles in material evaluation, while lesson two is all about the types of materials evaluation. So now let's try to take a look at now and explore lesson one. So before we take and discuss the, the, the different um, learning outcomes, let's try to look into the introduction first of this lesson. So this lesson actually aims to provide you with a comprehensive discussion on what materials evaluation is. The second one, it will also be uh, one thing to clear the marginal difference between the word analysis and evaluation. Somehow in the context of materials evaluation, of course, we really need to discuss their difference so that you would understand if when are you analyzing a certain material and when and when are you evaluating a specific material. Additionally, you'll be exposed to different authors' principles and materials evaluation as well as you will utilize the principles in evaluating existing language materials, specifically the DepEd's K-12 English Curriculum Guide. So you guys will explore the K-12 English Curriculum Guide of the Department of Education. And, and that is one of the best examples of materials. As I said, as we also previously um, def defined already, materials are those that we use to teach our learners or to make sure we achieve the TL or the teaching learning process. That's why we need materials. Materials are really massive. 
we are not only talking about the PowerPoint presentation that we are using. Even the course books, even your LPs, your syllabi, those are considered materials and a lot more. So that's what we should instill in our minds. And very good example of a material is obviously the DepEd's K-12 English Curriculum Guide. So what are our desired learning outcomes? So after completing this lesson, you are expected to, number one, define what materials evaluation is. Second, obviously, you'd be able to distinguish here the difference between analysis and evaluation. Third is you will evaluate language learning materials used in a basic education classroom using the principles in materials evaluation. And of course, class, the last one is you will examine the K-12 English curriculum and side materials that are used to facilitate mastery of a specific competency. So for the third and the fourth, it will be your task by the end of this unit. And I am going to teach you and show it to you. How would you examine the K-12 English curriculum? We are going to examine specifically the competencies because here, mastery of a specific competency, um, we are going to, to focus on the competencies that our junior high school and senior high school students are expected to manifest, okay? That will be your activity. So that's why it's in our the DLO or desired learning outcomes. All right, so now this time, let's try to start looking into the contents of our lesson. So first question is, what is materials evaluation? Materials evaluation. Materials evaluation class, it is a procedure that involves measuring the value or potential value of a set of learning materials. In our context, we are looking into learning materials. But let's say in your daily life, we tend also to evaluate the value of a thing, right, that we have in our life. For example, your gadget, you tend to evaluate. Let me measure now the value of my laptop, the value of my cell phone. Now we already have the online delivery of instruction. So you would ask yourself that. Um, let me check my phone. Can I use this in online? Okay. And how, how, you know, how long does it last in a day? Like in terms of the power of its power or battery life, let's say it will only last for for um, a second, <laughs> that's an exaggeration, but maybe it's only going to last for an hour and later on you're going to charge it all over again. And another thing, um, how fast is it when I am going to navigate or to explore or to search something on the internet? Is it really fast or very, very slow? So from your evaluation of that, when you evaluate your gadget, the result of your evaluation, you would come up a decision, right? That, oh, what should I do? Oh, these are now the things that I am experiencing with my phone. And based on my evaluation, it really has a very, very low score. Let's say if you are going to quantify the, your questions on how, you know, for example, slow, very slow, you will write zero, one to the Likert scale, things like that. And you would realize, oh, the score after you evaluate your cell phone, its score is very, very low. And that means you have to change it, right? Because that's the purpose class, why we are doing evaluation. Same when we are going to evaluate a certain learning material. We are going to take a look into, oh, how does it help the learners? Uh, were it able to, or was it able to um, make the class engaging? Or uh, do this group of learners enjoy this learning material in what way and how much they have learned using this material. So things like that. And if you come up with a very, very low score of your evaluation, of course, that means you have to change or you have to modify. That is why materials evaluation is very important. In all aspects in our lives, we really have to evaluate 
in every aspect in our life, cause we have to evaluate because there are things, for example, your clothes. That's why if you notice, you know, vloggers or influencers, they tend to have this um decluttering videos and all that and if you're going to watch those videos they would kind of evaluate their clothes or dresses and then from there they would come up with a decision if to let it go or to let it stay the same with our materials that we are using in our classes so it involves making judgments about the effect of the materials on the people these people class are those who are using our materials. In our case, of course, we have our learners and maybe in the context of publishing companies, you know, the teachers who bought the course books or any other printed materials or even electronic materials. So things like that. That's according to Tom Linson in 2013. So there is really a need for us to evaluate our materials. Because the evaluation would help the teachers, us who are using the materials at the same time, if we are not the one creating the specific material that we are using in our English language class, then the creator or the developer of that material would, you know, kind of maybe revise or will create a new edition, you know, that's why there are certain editions of books, right, because what is it that does not change? Classes, of course, change. Change is the only thing that does not change. Even curriculum changes. You know, everything in our lives change or changes, rather. So according to um, Tom Linson, uh, these are the following lists that we have to take a look at into when we try to evaluate. No? So the appeal of the material to the learner. So how does it appeal to the to the learners so that's one thing but it's not gonna be like okay we are going to you know let it let the learners or we are going to come up with an evaluation tool that what only states is the appeal of the materials to the learners no so we are going to put specific indicators if if oh, so we are going to write specific indicators under appeal how would we be able to measure appeal okay that's you know you have been learning that in your research right like indicators in order to measure a specific term or variable in your research study the credibility of the materials to learners teachers and administrators so the second one the credibility of the materials to the learners teachers and administrators and administrators are the materials can be trusted by by the users you know by the learners by the administrators um that's one thing that should be considered okay after credibility we are going to take a look into the validity of the materials when we say validity it would you know always be associated with facts okay um, how factual is it? So I am going to give you a situation. So let's say, for example, class, if I am going, if I would want to say that I would want to measure my blood pressure. So the use of blood pressure cuff, the one that, you know, the doctors or the nurses would use um, to people when we are, when they are going to take our blood pressure, that is valid because it really measures no, the blood pressure. So in, our, in the context of language learning or language teaching, so we have to make sure, is this material valid? Could we really use this? Is this suitable? Is this something factual for this level of our learners? Okay, it will never be valid if, for example, you have grade seven learners and then you are making use of a material that is actually good for the grade 11. So it's not that valid at all. It has no validity. So that is something that should be looked into. And then again, validity should be indicators as well. How would we measure validity? Next, reliability of the materials. If we are going to say reliability, it's something that you already established something, right? Oh, you are very reliable. When does somebody class would tell you, oh, this person is very reliable. Oh, I really commend you for being so reliable. By first attempt, for example, you are given a task or in your work and then 
first month of your work and then you're doing things that you, you are asked to do, of course, you wouldn't be, you know, tagged as a reliable worker, as a reliable person by first um, time you are doing a task. But let's say you are given so many tasks, okay, one after another and another and so on and so forth. And you always uh, deliver very consistent performance. Like last time, the first time you were given the task, you make sure that you did it very efficiently and flawlessly and all that. The next time you are doing the same task, you're also uh, showing the same performance until and so many tasks given to you still the same. That means you already established reliability. In terms of the material, so how many times these materials are already used, you know, for this group of students? So it is passed from one year to another, or from section to another, and then it yields the same result, the same um, results of the measurement. That means this material is very reliable, for example. And we could only say that it is very reliable if it yields the same result and it's on the positive side, no? For example, um, using this material, students of this uh, students coming from this group are really getting, you know, very reasonable um, scores or performance. And the next time uh, you do it to the same group, not, not that specific similar group, but the same group in a sense that probably the same grade level the next time, or probably this, um, another section, but of the same grade level. So of course it is expected that these students should be using the same materials, right? So since it is not only true to this section that after they use these materials, they have a, you know very reasonable performance, they are doing so well. And if you use that also to another section of the same you know year level and the same you know kind of age group with the other section, then if it yields the same result. That means there is reliability of the materials that you are using. And next is the ability of the materials to interest the learners and the teachers. This is very self-explanatory. Actually, class, it's really very difficult to come up with a single material that would interest everybody, right? Because everybody is different. And for example, in my case, I may be interested in this genre, but in how about the other teacher? How about the other people who will be using that material? They may not be interested in the genres. What should I do? Or that is this is kind of very difficult but it is really a challenge on how we could be able to come up with a material that would interest the learners and the teachers so we also need to um to evaluate that and then the ability of the materials to motivate the learners are the materials really you know um motivating or doesn't if it does not interest them then it would never you know create motivation for them motivation is um, if you're interested and you wanted to do that, that means you have the motivation to, you know, to learn using that material and the value of the materials in terms of short-term learning. So we should also take a look at into the short-term learning because we have short-term learning, long-term learning, and what is the value of the material in terms of short-term learning? So that is something that we should also explore. And I told you also how about the long-term learning. So again, class, these are the things or the checklist, the list given by Tomlinson 2013. So each of these, um, each of this list, if we are going to come up with an evaluation tool in order for us to evaluate our material, there should be indicator for each. Right? And the learner's perceptions of the value of the material. So in this case, this is very qualitative because when we are going to say learner's perceptions, it is very subjective. So it could be that the perception of this learner is different from the other. And at the same time, we would also not like to get the, the perception or the side of the students, but at the same time, the teachers as well. So we have here the teacher's perceptions of the value of the materials. And then the assistance given to the teachers in terms of preparation, delivery, and assessment. Because when we make use of a specific a specific material. So it would also matter no? how much time we prepare in order for us to utilize that material and how much time do we have for the delivery? How about for the assessment? So 
what I am trying to emphasize here are when we prepare the materials and then delivery of the materials and at the same time the assist assessment or the assistance given. Um, so not only that the, that the learner's perceptions will be sought here in our evaluation, but also the teacher's perception perceptions. And the next would be, how does our materials assist the learners in terms of preparation for their, you know, lesson, and then the delivery of the lesson and assessment? Okay, does it help? Like, you, were you able to use the material when you create assessment um, tool for your students? So things like that. The flexibility of the material. So let's say, ah, uh, you know, now, uh, we have now a changing uh, world because of the pandemic, everything changes. But then again, there is no such thing as, oh, it's pandemic. So now we have a new material, right? There is no such thing as that. So that means, class, what? how about the materials we are using? Is it adaptive? Is it adaptive to the specific context that we are in right now? Okay, that's one thing that should be considered as well. And how about the contribution made by the materials to teacher development. So the match with administrative requirements. We also have you know, administrative requirements alongside with everything. So does it match? Like, I mean, is this material, the material we use, does it match with what is required by us? Okay. And the material should also be able to contribute to the development of the teacher. I would just like you to remember class no two evaluations can be the same. Evaluation is pretty much subjective and they are being, you know, um, and, you know, somehow they are influenced by the objectives, backgrounds, and preferred, preferred styles of the participants. And that will also differ from context to context. It can also include an analysis or follow from one, but the objectives and procedures are actually different. An evaluation, remember, huh? an evaluation focuses, remember class, an evaluation focuses on the users of the materials and the, the users are the ones who are making judgments of the materials about the effects of the materials towards them. An analysis focuses on the materials and it aims to provide an objective analysis of them. So when we say um, evaluation, it focuses on the users, okay? So, for example, if you could recall, before we have the full blast online delivery of instruction, you were still answering and, you know, receiving modules. I, I believe that was the first semester we had a distant learning, right? So, after each unit, you were asked to evaluate the module. And that evaluation, that means, that is an evaluation because you are giving your own um, you know, opinion or what your perception about the module that you are using, because the module is the material. And that was your own judgment, because every, every student, the module that they are using, of course, have different effects towards them. Whereas, class, when we say analysis, in analysis, we focus on the materials, okay? So remember, if evaluation, it focuses on the users. But when we say analysis, we focus on the materials. And our aim here is to provide an objective answer. So for example, class of analysis, I would ask, um, is there, is there, um, is there assignment that is included in, in the module? And then I am going to recheck or revisit the module. And I have to answer it. If there is, it's a yes. If there's none, it's a no. So more or less, the analysis would um, focus on the material, the content of the materials. No? But when we say evaluation, evaluation is you know, focusing on the users of the materials. Well, analysis, we focus on the materials, and we are very objective. So let's say, for example, when you are buying a phone, when we you say you are going to conduct an an analysis of a specific phone. So you have to try to take a look at, oh, does this cell phone has or is capable uh, to store this particular app that you really need to use? Maybe this app is for you to create um, PowerPoint presentation just using your phone, right? So 
things like that. And if it's a yes, then it's good. If it's a no, that means you're not going to consider buying that phone because it does not give you the purpose or the need. It does not um, give you what you need. So that is analysis. But when, when you have already the phone and, of course, you're using it, after months or even years of using it, now you're trying to focus now on yourself being the user. And so evaluating the phone, the effect of the phone to you, to you as the user. So in that case, you are now doing evaluation. All right, class, now for you to have a clearer understanding on what analysis and evaluation are, let's try to take a look at this video. Okay, class, so I believe um, this video really explains so well the difference between evaluation and analysis. And of course, if you um, look into the video, looking back, it really, you know, tell us that evaluation is all about opinion. And then analysis would really allow you to explain by using the facts. Well, evaluation, you also tend to use facts when you evaluate, but analysis, it's just you know focusing on that particular thing that you are analyzing without giving your bias so that is very objective while evaluation is subjective so here is an example we have here analysis question so question under analysis would be does it provide a transcript of the listening text so you would answer it yes or no mm -hmm. and then question what does it ask the learners to do immediately after reading a text this is also an analysis question and can be answered factually because you are just going to revisit that material and you are going to take a look into if what does it ask the learners to do after the learners would read the text. And as a result of answering many such questions, a description of the materials you can make by creating or by, by analyzing the material through these questions. So you can come up with the description of the materials if you ask analysis questions. That's why you could be able to explain. Well, for the evaluation questions, here are the following examples. 
are the listening texts likely to engage the learner? So you may answer like very unlikely, very likely, likely. So again, it's very opinionated. No? It depends on you, okay, being the evaluator. And then also, it can also be given a numerical value, example two for unlikely. So if we are going to make use of Likert scale, you know, this is the probability scale, very unlikely it could be this uh, if we are going to use the scale of zero to one. But if you, let's say you are going to use the scale of zero to five, this will be, um, no, six. So this will be, I know, zero, it will be one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, zero to five. We are used to that per, um, Likert scale with that, you know, with zero to five in our research, no? But here in this case, it's zero to one. So, you know, this is how you're going to quantify evaluation results. So this is our activity number one class, and I am going to um, include this one. Um, activity number one, so tell if the question is analysis or evaluation, and then you will explain your answer. So this will be one of the outputs that you will have in our um, in unit two, and I am going to post this in our Google Classroom, okay? So uh, the module that is being referred would be, you know, any module that you have. So, but anyway, um, I am going to just uh, provide you with a module. So how engaging are the reels? I will attach a module here in, in, the, in the task. I am going to attach the module so that you won't be confused as to what specific module is it. Mm -hmm. And then we have here separating analysis from evaluation according to Little John in 2011 through a general framework for analyzing materials. So analysis of the target situation of use, materials analysis, and we have match and evaluation. We determine here the appropriacy of the materials to the target situation of use, and we have the action. And then at this point plus, let's go to the principles in materials evaluation. It's according to Tom Linson in 2013. This is Tom Linson. So materials, the principles in materials evaluation, what are the things that we have to consider when we evaluate? Remember the materials should achieve impact, okay? That should be always in our mind. There should, the, our materials should be impactful towards the users, no? because we are focusing here on materials evaluation. Materials should help learners to feel at ease, like they should not be threatened because of your material students does not, students do not want anymore to study. Is it good? No way. So they should feel at ease and they should feel comfortable. Okay, these are our, our um, kind of guidelines so that we can come up with a decision after our evaluation or what should we do with this material? Should we use it for the next academic year or should we change this? Things like that. And how would we, um, you know, how would we decide? Because we have here the guiding principles in materials evaluation. Materials should help the learners to develop confidence. So this is self-explanatory. They should be able to help the learners to develop self-confidence. For example, if that material is good for speaking, then at the end of the lesson, at the end of the lesson, or by the time the learners um, finish using that material, does it, does it help them develop confidence in speaking? And then what is being? And then what is being taught should be perceived by learners as relevant and useful. So it should be relevant and useful to, for to them. No? Materials also should require and facilitate learner self-investment. Like it should not be like spoon feeding them, but should allow the learners to explore by themselves as well. And uh, we also have your learners must be ready to acquire the points being taught both in terms of linguistic, developmental readiness, and of course, psychological readiness too. And then materials should expose the learners to language in authentic use. When we say authentic use, use, when we say authentic use, it is actually how it is being used in a specific situation or their corpora linguistic, corpus linguistics, you know, in a, in a, in a specific um, situation or or like in day-to-day -day living, in real-life scenario, how is it being used? And then the learner's attention should be drawn to linguistic features of the input. Materials should provide the learners with opportunities to use the target language to achieve communicative purposes. Okay? And then materials should 
help the learner to develop cultural awareness and sensitivity. It's also very important. That's why we have to include these kind of topics in our examples, in our literature that we embed in our course books or in the materials that we are using. Should reflect the reality of language use should help learners to learn in ways similar to the circumstances in which they will have to use the language, should help to create readiness to learn, and should achieve effective engagement. So not only the cognitive, the behavioral, but most importantly, the effective side of the learner should also be, you know, honed, should be developed, and you should, we should be able to, or the material should have this task or effective engaging activities for them. Now, according to Richards in 2001, now, according to Richards in 2001, material should give learners something they can take away from the lesson, teach something learners feel they can use, okay? And then give learners a sense of achievement. Like after this, oh, I achieve it. And it's through the task you gave. Practice learning items in an interesting and novel way, like novel meaning new. Provide a pleasurable learning experience and not too tight, okay? Not too very academics or very intellectually engaging or intellectual, highly intellectual that would be very boring. Provide opportunities for individual practice as well. Provide opportunities for them to personalize the materials and provide opportunities for them to self-assess their learning. Or provide opportunities for self-assessment of learning. You know, when you are going to ask the learners to answer a specific, you know, exam and out of that exam, they would know, oh, if I learned from this or not. Okay. That's all for lesson one class, and I hope you have learned a thing or two, and I, I'm going to give you a task about this. And if you have questions, then reserve that uh, during the feedbacking um, session that we will have right after I discuss all the topics under unit two, which is materials development. So thank you very much for being with me this time class. I hope you learned a thing or two, and I will see you on our next video lecture. Um, I will be talking about lesson two, which is all about the types of materials evaluation. And now we already explored the different uh, the principles as well as the definition of materials evaluation. And I hope evaluation and analysis are clear words now. So I will see you on our, my next video lecture. And God bless everyone. Keep safe. Bye. See you next time. Mm -hmm.